This is my campaign plan book project. I chose to do it on uh, Leo Burnett Company Incorporated, which is a uh, advertising agency. Yes, sir. Um, this is the founder himself, uh, Leo Burnett, who the company is named after. He was born in uh, St. John's, Michigan, 1891. He graduated with a degree in the best degree in the world, in my opinion, journalism, of course. Um, started Leo Burnett in 1935 with the staff of only eight people. That's why. Uh, the history behind Leo Burnett was... Um, he used to work for a company and he decided that he wanted to venture out on his own, which anybody who wants to progress and grow would do so. His first client was the uh, Minnesota Valley Candy Company, um, which, which uh, some people should know by the, uh, the Jolly Green Giant, which was one of the first, uh, I guess, trademark story characters that he created for a brand. Um, and Minnesota Valley Canyon was also a client of his previous, uh, well, his first, uh, job, his first agency, which, for some reason, I can't remember the name, but, um, the president of the, his first client basically told people that the reason that, the reason that they switched was because they wanted him. They wanted somebody who was fresh, new, somebody who didn't necessarily care about, you know, what people thought or how they felt. They just did it because they wanted to. Um, the Jolly Green Giant and Tony the Tiger are two of the most famous, uh, I guess, characters or uh, trademarks that he created for uh, brands. The Tony the Tiger is uh, was created for uh, Kellogg's Frosted Flakes. And uh, Green Giant, the, well, the Jolly Green Giant was created for, you know, uh, canned goods for... Uh, this company and he created these two because he felt like uh, this was something that people wanted to see. I don't, I'm not really sure about the Green Giant, but I know for a fact uh, Tony the Tiger, where well, actually both of them are still used today and one of the most popular uh, characters used for uh, Kellogg's and uh, Kangaroo companies. That's why. Um, this is just a quote that Leo Burnett used with whatever he, uh, you know, bought it himself upon, and it says, when you reach for the stars, you may not quite get one, but you won't come up with a handful of mud either. And that just basically saying, you know, as long as you're trying, you won't, you won't, you won't fail. That's, that's, that's the best I can do. That's why. Um... These are some of the major clients um, that Leah Burnett uh, have. Uh, Fiat, P Procter & Gamble, Philip Morris, uh, General Motors, aka GM, uh, Altria, and Pfizer. Um, those are the ones that didn't make Intrabrand. Intrabrand is a site that shows you all the um, companies that are, uh, it's, it's the top 100 list, the other companies that are, uh, their stocks are up during that year. So for 2016, Leo Burnett has Kellogg's, Samsung, McDonald's, and Coca-Cola. Kellogg's comes in at 39, Coca-Cola is 3, McDonald's is 12, and Samsung is 7. Um, these brands, Pfizer, GM, and Procter & Gamble, uh, are also two of the major ones that just happen to not make uh, the Instagram list this year. Uh, Pride and Gamble is one of the largest consumer good companies in America. It sponsors products that, you know, we need to survive. Uh, yeah, I think we need to survive like tissue, uh, soap, uh, uh, washing detergent for clothes and dishes. Um, what else? What else? Napkins. Uh, Anything that, you know, we need to keep ourselves rejuvenated, fresh, and things like that. Uh, General Motors, General Motors comes out of Detroit, you know, that's why they call Detroit the Motor City, because they, uh, they fix, they fix cars, sell parts, sell services, and things like that. 
and um, Leo Burnett won their uh, won their uh, what's the word? Won their uh, what is the word I'm looking for? Um, what is the word when you when you win something? Not not client. Um, it starts with the C. I can't remember, but they won. They uh they they won the right to advertise this company uh this summer. I think it was June fifteenth to be exact. Um, Pfizer is also uh I would say uh they sell they sell something that we need to survive. It's a pharmaceutical company which was uh, established over a hundred years ago. They sell uh, things like Nexium for uh, for nose congestion, rubber testing, uh, Centrum, Advil, basic things that uh, you know people take for headaches, cold medicines, uh, things that you know help you feel better. Well, that are at least supposed to make you feel better. Next slide. Um, the creative the creative output. Well, on th this particular uh, section of it, I chose to focus on. Uh, one client, one specific client, which was uh, Kellogg's, just because I love cereal. So, yeah, um, <laughs> Kellogg's uh, target audience, uh, one of the representatives says that uh, the target audience would be uh, children. I'm, I'm guessing children between the ages of 7 and maybe 13, just being able to express themselves freely without, you know, having to feel like people are going to talk about them or judge them and things like that. Uh, their campaign slogan was, let your great out, which means uh, don't be afraid to be yourself, you know, regardless of your age and things like that. And it later says that uh, fathers will be featured in uh, a next couple of print ads, TV commercials, uh, different, the, the, the different advertising medias, mediums that uh, that they will uh, put out because they want fathers to be able to relate to teenagers because I guess around 13, 14, you know, uh, fathers tend not to relate to, I would say not to relate to daughters more than sons, I guess. I don't know. Um, Kellogg's competitors would be General, uh, not General Mills, uh, well, yeah, General Mills, Kraft, Nestle, Heinz, and Post Cereal. Post Cereal, uh, they make cereal like. Fruity Pebbles, which are the bomb. Uh, Fruity Pebbles, um, Pops, and I think, no, Kellogg's makes my Uh Fruity Pebbles, Pops, and one other cereal, I can't remember, but um, yeah, they're located, of course, in North America, Latin America, Europe, and Asia Pacific. Um, I think North America is uh, the places where uh, most of the revenue is made. I'm not sure about the other places. Um, now the SWOT analysis, and SWOT stands for strength, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. The strengths would be uh, Kellogg is uh, manufactured in over 18 countries and, market, and marketed in over 80, which means that um, the mass amount of product can get out to different places uh, quicker than normal because it's being marketed all over the world, which means people in in third world countries or people that's in you know developing countries can still have cereal if they want it. Say. Um, they tend to have very uh very different and innovative uh, marketing strategies, like as far as print ads. Uh, TV commercials and things like that. A lot of the TV commercials are, you know, sending on our kids because Tony the Tiger is, I guess, was made for for comfort uh, loving type of things. And and you don't necessarily. Well, I know a lot of grown people eat cereal, but not technically. When you see children or babies eating cereal, it's more. It brings out more of an emotion, which uh, targets. Um, I guess we just target the audience to buy more things like that. Um, okay. Um, 
Kellogg's has a Fighting Hunger Initiative with Walmart, which uh, basically states that, you know, for every, I think for every case of Kellogg's cereal store, no matter the, no matter the type of cereal, um, they do, they give a certain amount of money to uh, third world countries or homeless shelters or things like that around the world. Uh, a week, well, one of the weaknesses that I wanted to point out specifically was um, a lot of people. A lot of people think that the snacks that are made by Kellogg's aren't necessarily uh, healthy in nature, as far as like good to eat and things like that. Um, they are things like uh, I guess quick on the go food that you can eat that's that's you know that's considered to be quote unquote healthy, but it's not actually breakfast or something that you should eat every day. That's the perception. Uh, Kellogg, the one, one of the opportunities that Kellogg may be presented with, or maybe they already have been, is uh, creating a cartoon uh, comic series, which I don't think would be that hard because they already have a character, so they can kind of base it off of that. Um, you know, and just to relate to children who are just starting to eat breakfast because you know a lot of a lot of babies and things like that don't necessarily know what breakfast actually is they just eat so I would say probably around three four five that's when children really like start to eat cereal uh, bread just you know things that we are we necessarily eat during the morning time um one of the one of the threats is that uh, um, the I guess the breakfast uh, on the go bars and things like that are starting to become irrelevant because people are starting to I guess the the well the tech world is starting to advance so um, people having to be on go watch news on their phone everybody's starting to do things on their phone they don't necessarily have time to sit and eat. So they're grabbing uh, the the breakfast bars, and it's not necessarily breakfast. So that was just the SWOT analysis on that part. Next slide. Um, Kellogg's uses a lot of creative strategies, like uh, TV commercials. Um, I just recently saw a print ad, you know, that said. Uh, I eat Kellogg's for breakfast. What do you eat? And it was it was a man with a spoon, and he you know he looked he wore activewear as if he were in track or anything like that. Um, soft sale would be um, soft sale would be a family of you know two little girls or two little boys or vice versa sitting around the table making rice krispies with their parents or their mother or their father. That is soft sale. Um, love. Love would be like, um, love would be like a little boy, you know, fixing his parents' breakfast and taking it to their bedside or something like that. And I left a, I left a, uh, a link. Could you click the link uh, for me so we can see? Um, did, you, did not click. Uh, I think you have to, uh, you have to, you have to exit out of the uh, full screen. And this was, this is the, uh, this is the link to the print ad that I, uh, wanted to show you guys. And hopefully it comes up, let's see. Let's see if we're at right. Okay, this, oh, it's kind of big. This will be another example of, you know, love for print ad that Kellogg's did. And at the bottom, you see he has a ring, and at the bottom it says, don't spend a lot of time in there. And that just, I guess, I'm not necessarily sure what they meant by, uh, you can go back up. Yeah, well, I'm not necessarily sure what they meant by, you know, well, I guess, I guess it's saying, you know, don't come out of the bathroom, but it is what it is. It, you know, it kind of, it toggles at something in you. I don't necessarily know what it is, but. That's just what it is. Okay, you can you can just minimize it. 
Um, next slide. Um, this is a this is uh my storyboard that I uh that I want to make at this particular commercial. I don't I don't necessarily think it was directed to a commercial yet, but it um and that's why I came up with the audio. And the visual is like you know a woman waking up in the morning. She's not necessarily uh feeling great about how she's looking or feeling, and so she goes and has her a bottle of uh, special K cereal. And that just that just goes with anything like if. Uh, you know, that's me. That's me myself, personally, because when I wake up in the morning and I eat breakfast, I'm cranky. So it's just you know about um, getting up and making sure you eat, and that just goes back to the the neutral, the bar, the I guess breakfast bars that don't necessarily suffice for you know a healthy meal and helping you feel better. So um, the audio I said, you know, she get up, she says, ugh. It's Monday, you know, and she kind of sluggish. Then when she eats her bottle of cereal, she says, it's Monday, you know, I guess she's a little bit happier. I don't necessarily know how to, you know, perk up, but yeah, that's just how it goes. Um, next slide. Um, this is the ad that I came up with, um, well, the print ad that I came up with. Uh, it's just, again, you know, a child, maybe he, he looks like he's about five, Six, um, you know, fix himself. He he fixed the nice bowl of cereal too. That's me. So I, you know, I, I fix I fix the fat bowls. Um, you know, when you when you eat healthy and you you know you do it on a daily basis, you grow big. And this was the part necessarily where we were supposed to create uh, we were supposed to create a client briefing. I wasn't necessarily physically sure about it until after I completed the PowerPoint. So the uh, the client briefing would be the history behind Kellogg's, um, how much how much revenue it makes during the year, how much it's made during that particular year that you know that the client wants something, um, the benefits of the uh, company. Um, what else? What else? What else? The benefits of the company. Um, what other what other uh what other clients it has, you know, because if you if you if if I'm a client, I wanna know if they are uh I would wanna know if they're sponsoring any other big clients because a lot of people, you know, are skeptical about companies who don't who don't necessarily sponsor big people. I guess because they feel like, you know, when you don't sponsor somebody who's known then their brand won't get much publicity. I can't ever say that word. Um, yeah, that's just, that's the client briefing. And the creative briefing would be, sorry, the creative briefing, go back, yeah, just start right now. The creative briefing would be, uh, what am I, what am I the creative briefing would be, um, how would they set up the, uh, how would they set up the print ad, the TV commercial, um, how many people would they use, the revenue they uh, want, um, basically a storyboard on how are they how are they going to market the brand. Um, and that was necessarily them. I mean, I didn't physically know how to create it then, so that's why I'm explaining it now. And the last slide of the presentation, you can go back to the last slide. The last slide of the presentation was part of stage three was creating your own storyboard and uh, analyzing, you know, what it means, uh, how does it benefit the brand, and it's just about, you know, even though it's a kid in the in the ad, you know, it's still sitting around for people because a lot, of, well, adults, a lot of adults don't necessarily eat breakfast or eat healthy breakfast in the morning, so um, a lot of uh, a lot of uh, adults have health problems, and it's understood because some adults can't eat certain things in one like pork or starch or grits or things like that. So cereal would be or could be a healthy suffice for that, and that's uh that's the plan for uh Leo Burnett and Company, and that's the end of my presentation.